problem is with a lot of people that want to buy rental properties is that they want to buy a rental property, but they don't even know what for. So they go on YouTube or they go online, they do a little research on what to buy and how to find a property, and then they end up buying a property, their tenant has to get evicted, something happens along those lines, and then they end up saying that rental properties are not really that profitable or it's not the right thing for me. But look, if you want to get into a rental property and you want to do it with the least amount of risk possible and make sure that you're putting your best foot forward before you have to evict tenants or you're stuck with two mortgage payments or something crazy like that, then pay attention to this video because I'm going to teach you a few tricks up my sleeve that I've learned over the years from having to get rid of tenants, having tenants not pay me, so on and so forth. Now listen, I realize there's a lot of different YouTubers out there making videos on how to buy rental properties, what type of financing to get, how much money should you put down, what type of property you should buy. So I wanted to give you a quick introduction to me and you can watch this video to the full because I promise you it's going to change your perspective on what type of rental property you should buy and how you should honestly go about doing it but first things first I got to give you a small little introduction to me on why I'm able to actually give you this type of information and why you should honestly listen to me before you go through this entire 10 or 15 minute video my name is Austin Harley I've been a real estate licensed agent in the Northern Virginia and DC metro area for about the past three years if you haven't already go ahead and check out this video over here so you can view my story and how I basically went from being completely broke, not being able to pay my rent, to making a bunch of money in real estate commissions by selling and helping people buy properties. The reason why I'm able to teach you this confidently is because I am now a real estate licensed broker, which means I've done about $40 million in real estate in the past few years of being full-time as a realtor. So that means I've been the middleman for over 300 transactions, being rentals, buy and sells, and I've seen the good, bad, and the ugly and what people should and what people shouldn't do. Not only that, I have flipped properties I have been creative financing and I have screwed up on my own rentals myself. So this intro isn't for me to tell you that I'm good enough to teach you this type of information, but it's more for me to be more transparent and show you guys that I am still learning in this process as you probably will as you acquire more real estate properties because that's probably what you want to do if you're watching this video in the first place. First things first, you gotta ask yourself why you actually want to buy a rental property. Is it because you're planning on retiring off this? Is it because everyone thinks it looks cool on YouTube? Figure out your real reason why you actually wanna acquire a rental property. In the short term, it's not as profitable as most YouTubers actually make it seem. The second thing you need to think about is how much money and how good is your credit score? Because honestly, at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of no money down, you know, there's creative financing, there's all that talk about subject to and lease option purchases, but look, 95% of the audience that's going to be watching this video is not going to end up doing that type of creative financing because it takes a lot of attorneys, paperwork that attorneys have to make in the first place, and it takes a lot of guidance to even find those type of sellers that are going to be okay with it, let alone be able to take that kind of transaction to close it. And the reason why I bring that up is because I want to preach to the generic audience that's going to be watching this type of video and going to go and execute it using a standard type of loan. Now, there's two different ways you can start out buying a rental property. You can start out buying it as an investment property where you've all heard it you got to put down 20% you don't pay PMI but then you should be able to cash flow a little bit let's be honest putting down 20% is not going to be that profitable when you think about the amount of money you're going to get back think about it like this if you're going to put down $40,000 on a $200,000 house how much cash flow are you going to get off that rental property to get your $40,000 back think about it like that your cash on cash return is really not that much even if you weigh in the taxes factor deducting the interest and all of that fun stuff right there, you're really not making that much money in the short term. So buying it as an investment property can be profitable if you just have a buttload of cash sitting around. But for the majority of the audience that's sitting around trying to buy their first or maybe second or third rental property, most people don't have 20% sitting in their bank. So what do you do? This is where you bring out the creative tricks that I'm going to teach you right now. The first thing that you can do whenever you want to buy a rental property is you got to think a few years in advance. So think about it like this. Are you renting right now? Are you buying your first home? Or are you already owning a home and maybe you're thinking about upsizing or downsizing in a home, well, there's a perfect opportunity to acquire your first rental property. Heck, if you already own a property, you might be able to quickly turn that into a rental property and get something nicer if you strategize your numbers correctly like I'm gonna teach you in this video. So how do you strategize the numbers to work? Well, I'll teach you in a second after I finish this sandwich and then we'll head to the whiteboard. Okay, so look, the first strategy that I want you to consider is buying where you currently live or buying a property with the intention of making it your primary residence as lenders like to hear it. Now, why is this such an important topic? Well, for the majority of people that don't have 
have 20% sitting in their bank account, being able to buy where their primary residence is going to be is not only going to be able to allow them to get a cheaper mortgage with a better interest rate, lower upfront fees, and better interest over the lifelong term of the loan, they're also going to be able to feel more confident knowing that they have lived in that property for a few years, done the general maintenance, and gotten it basically bulletproof ready to become a rental before they started renting it out. In other words, they became the guinea pig. And on top of that, if you buy a primary residence and then turn it into a rental property, you get to avoid, if you've lived in there for two years, the capital gains taxes. If you plan on selling this property in the short term future, which I also would recommend you to do, so that way you can reap the benefits of your hard work as I'm going to teach you in this video. All right, so if you hung with me this long, this is the time where I'm gonna be actually giving you an example and explaining to you what I'm actually talking about so you can apply it to yourself in real life. So let's take this example right here, that you're currently owning a property, paying down the mortgage, maybe you've been there for one or two years and you're thinking about upsizing or downsizing, or maybe you're not even thinking about it. The strategy that I'm gonna show is gonna allow you to do that so that you can move on, acquire more rental property and keep upsizing to something better without having you know multiple mortgage payments that you have to be really scared or worried about. So let's give this example right here. Let's say that Joe Smith owns this property. He's been living there for three years. He has an FHA loan with a 4% interest rate, okay? You don't really have to understand any of that stuff to learn from this video. I'm just painting a vivid picture for you. Let's say his mortgage payment is $2,000 and he can rent his property out for $1,900. Now, typically in this type of situation, I would say that if you're gonna negative cash flow, which means you have to come out of pocket to pay your HOA, your mortgage, or any other general fees that have to go with the property to rent it, that you should never sign up for that responsibility because remember you're signing either a one or two year lease most likely and you don't want to be stuck to a commitment that requires you to come out of pocket hundred two hundred dollars or anything at all in general however for the sake of this situation this is where most people would be three or four years down paying down their loan so we're just going to use this as a general example to show you how you can still build wealth now let's say this property is worth three hundred thousand dollars Okay. Now let's say after his down payment of getting an FHA loan and three years of equity being built up, let's just call his mortgage balance at 280,000. Now Joe Smith wants to upsize in a home. He wants to buy the fancy single family home. So Joe Smith has saved up a reasonable down payment for his next home, 3%, and he wants to buy a $400,000 home because he saved around ten to $15,000 in his bank account to buy that bigger house. Be realistic about this, let's budget in some closing fees. If you're gonna be buying new property, you do have to pay closing fees. Typically, it's gonna be around 3%. The easiest way to get around this if you're not already a real estate professional or real estate license is to get a rebate agent or to get a seller to give you a credit or seller concession, seller subsidy, whatever you wanna call it, to pay for your closing costs. That way, you only come out of pocket the down payment that goes into the equity of the property. Because remember, working with little cash here, you need to make sure you put all of your money in the right pot. If you're putting money towards taxes, fees, attorney fees, all that stuff, not really gonna be building any self wealth here and this whole process is not really gonna be worth it at all. Very important and I highly stress you to do more due diligence and figure out a good real estate agent that can get you all of your closing costs covered so you only come out of pocket your down payment. So let's talk about how Joe Smith will look financially on the bigger picture. Okay, so as I was filming this, I realized that the whiteboard is probably not like the best idea to be drawing on because it's really hard for people to see it. So I decided to draw it on here and then as soon as I started writing in it, realized I don't have a black permanent marker so it's really difficult to read. So let's recap where we're at. So we have a $2,000 rental right here. He's paying $1,900 for the rent, and then he buys a new property. Now, the new mortgage payment is gonna be $2,500 on a $400,000 house is pretty accurate, and he has that extra $100 payment, so in total, he's paying around $2,600 not accounting for utilities or HOAs or anything of that sort. The first thing he's gonna do with his old property is gonna, he's going to quit claim deed it into an LLC. Now, for those of you who don't know, an LLC is just a separate fancy word for an entity that you would own and operate to protect yourself. So you're basically putting your other asset, your now rental property into a business name, an LLC. And you can ask a title company to do this for you. It shouldn't be that much money. Now, the reason why you wanna do that is because what you wanna do is you wanna start taking advantage of taxes. So 99% of people that acquire lots of rental properties or rental properties in general do it for the purpose of taxes. It's not that you make so much money up front because again, taking this scenario, which is a very common realistic scenario, this person is negative cash flowing and I would probably advise 
against it. But most people don't have 20% down to be able to do anything crazy like go and acquire rental after rental after rental. So if you have to start out this way by negative cash flowing a little, make it worth your while by taking the extra steps and doing the extra research to put it into an LLC name. That way you can start taking advantage of the taxes in the back end. So that way that negative $100 rent payment actually turns into a positive cash flow payment as I'll explain right now. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to screen in over here just a Zillow screenshot of what the mortgage payment would look like on his old rental property so you can get an idea of where each amount of money is going. Because if you don't already know, your mortgage is consistent of pity, which is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And certain aspects of that mortgage payment is tax deductible and the other aren't. I'm not a tax accountant. Check with your tax advisor. But this is how you can kind of take advantage of things when you put it into an LLC because now you are considered a business owner in the rental property field. $400 of that principal just to round it up and make it simple is going towards principal. That's building up your equity on your $280,000 mortgage balance that we talked about before. $1,000 goes towards interest. $267 goes towards taxes. $138 goes towards the PMI. They charge you a mortgage rate, which is the insurance. And depending on your tax accountant, that might actually be deductible as well. Wink, wink. Just check with your accountant. Make sure you do the right thing. Out of these things right here, you have $400 in principal. That's not tax deductible. Your interest is tax deductible as it was before. Your taxes are tax deductible as it was before it was a rental property. PMI, again, check with your tax accountant, but it should be deductible. However, since it's now in an extra LLC or a business, you can claim your mileage, your expenses for repairs if anything is done to the property. And since you're running and operating a business in the rental property field, your new property that you're paying $2,500 a month in, you should be able to claim some expenses from using a home office. I would highly recommend you after you open the LLC for this property and quick claim deed into it, set up a separate checking accounts with a separate EIN number for that business. No matter what state you're in, you can open up an LLC and it shouldn't cost more than 150 bucks. You don't need to pay an attorney to do an LLC or anything like that. All you have to do to get an EIN is just go to the IRS website, which I'll probably screen in this video right here. And it takes like 10 seconds. You print out the certificate, you go to the bank, you give them the documents, for the business and for the EIN certificate, they open up separate checking and savings accounts and bam, now you are all of a sudden a business owner. It doesn't have to be a more expensive payment right here. You could actually be buying a house of the exact same size as long as you have some type of sufficient down payment to be able to get into your next home. You don't have to use the example of putting 3% down. Heck, if you can get qualified for something with 0% financing, you could be able to do this and have the same amount of monthly mortgage except pay that extra $100 rent payment benefits of all the deductions that you can get right here. Again, it's all about perspective. It's all about how you structure your purchasing and selling of real estate. This by far, what I'm about to teach you next is gonna be the one most profitable things you can do in real estate. And it's so simple. And it's what millionaires do. It's what people who just get started in real estate do. It's what I've done myself to make hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate. At early 20s and it's the concept of adding value so let's take the example of the three hundred thousand dollar rental property that joe smith had before okay his mortgage balance was 280 that gives him about twenty thousand dollars in equity not counting for closing fees if he was to sell the house or any real estate agent fees okay i'm just trying to keep it simple for you guys right here the key is are going to acquire another property and do the llc method like i just talked about then what you want to do with your saved up money as the next down payment is put it in a very specific pot so that way the money that you put down actually ends up growing up and here's how you do it you find another property doesn't matter what it's valued at but you find it at a discount and I'm gonna teach you exactly how you can do that but let me walk you through this example first so let's keep it simple and say you found another $300,000 valued house at it. now you bought it for 250 and I'm gonna explain how you can do that in a second that immediately means you're gonna get $50,000 in equity which again it's invisible until you sell the property but follow my method to the end of this video you're gonna understand how you can get that that money out and really not pay taxes on it and have it for completely free so again now why would someone give you a house that's worth three hundred thousand for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars i mean that seems like crazy like why would someone do that it's about finding the right type of seller so a house that needs repairs a seller with motivation maybe they've gone through divorce and inheritance something of that sort maybe the house needs a lot of fixes maybe it needs a new roof maybe it needs new carpet maybe it needs cosmetic work let's be realistic about this i'm not telling you to go out there and buy a complete fixer upper and don't move your family in there no i'm not asking you to do that these aren't flipping type numbers you can't expect to go buy it for 250 you know spend 20 grand on it and 
resell it for a profit. You're not gonna do anything like that. This is for rental purposes only. It all comes down to the motivation. So things that I would want you to look for to find this type of deal. High days on market, homes with terrible pictures, the homes that all the other buyer competition is not gonna wanna check out, homes that have severe drop in price. Those are the homes that you can jump on and lowball them and hopefully take advantage of them to get them to pay all your closing costs and get that house for 250. Now let's be realistic about it. We know that once you buy this house that needs, let's just say $10,000 in repairs at 250, it's not immediately worth $300,000. You're gonna have to spend the 10,000 to make it worth 300,000 and you don't necessarily need to spend the 10,000 right away. Let's say you kept that property for two years to avoid capital gains. Then you rented it out using this exact same strategy. You can then spend the $10,000 in work slowly over the course of renting it out and then you could get the tax deduction for it as well. So in a nutshell, by this time, two years down the road, your mortgage will probably be at a $270,000 balance because remember, you're not putting too much towards it, but you're gonna have a ton of tax benefits. You're gonna be owning two homes. So you have two tax benefits on that. You'll have a separate LLC. You can then keep this property, acquire another property again, and then you could sell this property, the second one that you have. Now that in a nutshell is how you should acquire real estate as a new. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced, maybe you've owned a few homes, there's more method to the madness here that you could go about. This is just one specific example that I is extremely effective. It's one that I've personally done myself. This is how you get real estate freedom. I'm going to be teaching this on my YouTube channel. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching if you made it this far don't forget to subscribe and like and i'll catch you in the next one